Today's video is going to talk about the surface area of rectangular prisms. And you can see in your notes that this is in the grade 6 textbook, uh, chapter 12, section 2. And it talks about nets, which we know if you lay out the figure and uh, flat and all the surfaces, you can see all the surfaces individually. And you need to kind of visualize this or perhaps draw this as you're doing surface area problems. It will help you. So nets allow you to see all the surfaces of a solid at one time. You can use nets to help you find the surface area of the three-dimensional figure. Surface area is the sum of all the areas of the surfaces of a figure. So there's the definition of surface area. All the faces that you see, those surfaces, you're going to find the area and add it all up to get the total surface area of the total object, the 3D shape. So you can use nets to write formulas for the surface area of prisms. The surface area S of a prism is the sum of the areas of the faces of the prism. For the rectangular prism shown, you can see that it's length times width plus length times height plus width times height plus length times width, plus length times height, plus width times height. Now here in the video you can see the colors. Of course on your copy it's not going to be colored, but you can see it here in the video nicely. We have two red top and bottom, a blue front and back, and a green left and right. So we have matching pairs, the front and the back of the box of course, rectangular prism, are going to match each other. So the front and the back are the 2LH, the top and the bottom are the 2LW, and the left and right are the 2WH. So that's the well-known formula for surface area of a prism, which you can see it's listed here. Um, find the surface area of this prism, and here's an example that's completely worked out for you, this example one. Um, and they are showing you the two red parts, this exact same um, rectangular prism. They've now put dimensions on it. And the two blue parts, the front and back, and the two green parts, the width and the height, the um, left and right pieces. So you get the surface area is um, total 432 inches squared. So formula, plug in, they're showing some computation here answer and put a label on it. So formula, plug-in, answer, label. We're going to be looking for all of those parts. Next page. So here's a rectangular prism that has a 12 inches long, so that's the length, and 8 inches wide, that would be the width, and the height is 4 inches. And I always label the picture, as it tells me, with an L, a W, and an H. And that helps me to put the correct values into the formula. To find the surface area, draw a net of that rectangular prism. Um, if it helps you, do that. Go ahead and draw out the net. So I know I have a 12 by 8 green top and a 12 by 8 green bottom, which you can see here. Here's the top and the bottom. And I have a 12 by 4 purple front and a 12 by 4 purple back, front and back. And I have a 8, my pen's going over that, 8 by 4 inches high red side, so this is the um, left side and the right side of the rectangular prism. So I'm going to find the area of this. Um, I'm going to do it one way right here on your notes, and you can fill in with me. So the area equals 2LW, I'm going to follow that formula, plus 2LH plus 2WH. So I have six faces total, 2 plus 2 plus 2 makes 6, and I've got the related parts here. So again, my length was the 12, my width was the 8, and my height is the 4. So plugging in those values correctly, 2 times the length of 12, and my width, my width is the 8, so I'm putting in the 8 as the W, wherever the W is, plus 2 times the length, which is 12, 
times the height, which is 4, plus 2 times the width, which is 8, times the height, which is 4. So yes, you can use a calculator to help you calculate this. Then I get 192 plus my 96 plus my 64. Now a common error is people go ahead and multiply these three numbers. They just keep hitting times, 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 times. So um, make sure that you see that it's adding the sum of those two sets of matching rectangles three times. So we get 300 and to 352 total inches squared. So I have formula, plug in, a computation step, answer, label. Um, you're going to see on the next page that they do this one a little bit differently. I'm going to leave this um, picture, because it would be would have been nice if they had the picture here. So the picture doesn't match this. It says, the surface area of the rectangular prism is the area of its net. So they did it differently. They didn't follow the formula. The length of the rectangle, the total area of the two purple and the two orange faces, is equal to the area of a rectangle that has a length of 12 plus 8 plus 12 plus 8, which is 40, by 4. I'm going to go back and show you what they're talking about here. They find one large rectangle, the purple and red or orange as they're calling it part. So here's my 12 plus 8 plus 12 plus 8 by 4. So they're finding this rectangle all as one rectangle rather than a 2LW and a 2LH. So they're combining this into one part here. Or this, I'm sorry, 2LH and 2WH. They're doing this. 2LH plus the 2WH. They're combining that as this one big rectangle. So if you go back to this one, you'll see that they get 160 inches squared. Well, I got it as two separate parts, 96 plus 64, the way that I did it. Then they find the two um, red parts, or I'm sorry, green parts there, the top and the bottom, which are two other rectangles, which is the 192 that I got. So a little bit different way of doing it. I thought that was clever that they just did it as one total rectangle, added up the whole length, 12 plus 8 plus 12 plus 8 to get 40 by the height of 4. So the surface area of a prism is equal to the perimeter of the base multiplied by the height. That, this is the shortened formula that they used here. The perimeter of the base. 12 plus 8 plus 12 plus 8 multiplied by the height times 4. And then added it to the sum of the area of the other two bases. Those two green parts. So, yes, you can do the shortened formula. However, um, New York State, on the state exam next year, you're going to see that they're going to give you that 2LW, 2LH, 2WH formula and doing it as six rectangles, doing it as three groups of two rectangles. Um, find the surface area of the prism formed by each net. So here's where we can practice. And I just choose... Um, a letter in uh, you know, one of these dimensions, I call it out. I usually label it. I'm going to call this length, and I'm going to call my 5 my height, and I'm going to call 7 my width. Does it really matter? No. Because multiplication is commutative, and so is addition. And this formula has addition and multiplication in it. So I can switch this, and you could choose these differently, but I always label my picture. So then when I'm plugging into my formula, I'm being consistent. Two times, oh, what did I call L? Nine times the width, what did I call width? Seven plus two times, what was the L? Nine times the height, which is five, plus two times that width, which is seven, times my height, which is five. So I'm being consistent. Here, I'm showing width as 7, and also here, I'm showing width as 7. That's why I label a picture, so I don't forget what I'm calling length, width, and height. Do you have to do that? No, that's just my trick. It works for me. Could I have done, oh, the trick that that shortened version? Could I have added 5 plus 9 
plus 5 plus 9 and then add and then multiplied by 7 and done one rectangle and then the two bases could have done that as well. I'm going to do it like how our Common Core New York State does it. This is the Singapore way of doing it. This is their version of, okay, when we flatten it out, I make one big large rectangle here. How about if I find that rectangle, the big large one, and then add the two bases to it? The top and the bottom are the bases, what they call the bases. So you have a couple versions. I'm not going to make you stick to one version or the other. You choose. I'm going to do it like the New York State way. And the total here would get, and I could use a calculator, which I did, 286 feet squared. Okay, we've got our rectangular prism number two. And again, I'm going to call my length this time the 14, my width the 10, and my height the 12. Oh, it's a um, 12 by 12 square. This is a square-based rectangular prism. So I have this, um, oh, no, 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 it's not. These are all rectangles, right? That's a 12 by 12 by 10. Oh, it looked like it was. This is 12 by 10. Not a square base rectangular prism, but we are going to see one of those, which is a little different. So, area equals 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. So, if say you want to do the way that they had done it, um, you could combine these two parts like they did, and you could just say, okay, I'm going to do 2LW plus that very big long rectangle. That would be the formula that you would use. And you could add the 14, the 12, the 14, and the 12. So 52 by 10. And you'd get 520 there. So you'd get 52 by 10. You could do that. If you want to try the shortened version, I'm, I'm all for that. If you like that way, you can do it that way. I'm going to do it the New York State Common Core way. So 2 times 14 by 10 plus... 2 times 14 is the L and 12 is the H, plus 2 times 10 by 12. And using a calculator to help me, but this is easy. 14 times 10 is 140 times 2 is 280. You know, look for the easy things to multiply. Well, um, 28 by 12, huh? I don't know that, but I could do 24 by 12. That's 336. I don't know that fact. Um, and th this is easy. Do 120, 10 times 12 is 120 times 2 is 240. Or use a calculator. And then adding these up, we get 856 centimeters squared. So formula, plug in, answer, label. Now again, you could have called this the L and this the H and this the W. You would get different products, but your sum at the end should still come out to be 856 centimeters squared. So you can pick the different dimension label um, and you should still get, uh, you might not get 283, 36, and 240 because you're multiplying different numbers together there, but you should still get the 856 centimeters squared. To find the surface area of a cube, well a cube, remember when you flatten it out and there's different ways that you could flatten out a cube, has six squares. So its formula is not six rectangles or three pairs of two rectangles. It's six squares. So it has a different formula. The formula is 6s squared or e as you can see here. They use e. I would say s. So I didn't square as an s. So I would say 6s squared um, and that is a common version of it to find the area of one of the squares, right, and then just multiply it by 6. So the cubes are much easier. So you can see that they gave dimensions to this cube. It's 5 centimeters. 6 times 25 would give you 150 centimeters squared. Still formula plug and answer label. So some problem solving. A cube didn't give me a picture. Could I draw the picture to help? Sure, I could draw a cube. It might help. And this is a cube. And it has 9 inches. So it's 9 by length, 9 by width, 9 by height. So the cube has an edge measuring 9 inches each. Find the surface area of the cube. 
Well, the formula is 6 times the side squared, if you want to use E for edge squared, or B for base, if you like to call it a base. Um, doesn't really matter the letter there. So 6 times, well, it's a, inside here, it's a 9 by 9 square. So yes, you're not multiplying 6 times 9 times 9, you're doing 9 times 9. You should square first and then multiply, although it's commutative, so I'm going to get the same answer. 6 times 81, that's 486 inches squared. So formula, plug in, answer, label. A rectangular shipping container measures 20 feet by 8 feet by 6 feet. You could draw this. Um, find the surface area of the shipping container. If you want to draw a rectangular prism to match that, that would be great. This is, um, I'm going to just say label this just like I would if it was a picture. I'm going to call 20 the length, the width I'm going to call 8, and the height I'm going to call 6. I always label my dimensions, whether it's in a picture or if it's in words. So my formula, area equals 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. That's my surface area formula. That is one of the formulas that you are given on your reference page. 2 times 20 times 8, length times width, plus 2 times 20, my length, times my height of 6, plus 2 times my width of 8, times my height of 6. Well, 40 times 8, 4 times 8 is 32, bring along the 0, plus my 40 times 6, that would be 240, 4 times 6 is 24, bring along the 0. And um, 16 times 6, I do know that is 96, or I could do 8 times 6 is 48 times 2, that might be easier for you, that's 96. So when I add my three sums together there, my three products together to get the sum of 656 feet, this is my label, squared. So formula, plug in, computation step there, answer label. The edge length of a cube is three and a half inches. Find the surface area of the cube. Again, they didn't give me the dimensions. You could draw the cube or not. This is my side. So it's six S squared. Six times the side squared. And I'm going to leave that answer for you to show me in class. So I'm not going to continue that one. And I'm also not going to do number four. I would like to have you try this on your own. When you get in class tomorrow, first thing with your group, compare your answers. Then I'm going to come around to see that you did number four. So I'm going to be checking for number two and number four in class tomorrow. And again, we're going to practice some of these in class.